Welcome back to the Discount Property Investor Podcast. Our mission is to share what we have learned from our experience and the experience of others to help you make more money investing like a pro. We want to teach you how to create wealth by investing in real estate the Discount Property Investor way. To jumpstart your real estate investing career, visit freewholesalecourse.com, the most complete free course on wholesaling real estate ever. Thanks for tuning in. All right, guys, welcome back to the Discount Property Investor Podcast. I am your host, David Dodge, and today I am joined by Tony Javier. Did I say that right? Javier. 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 I knew it, man. I was going to screw it up, and I did. Oh, man. Tony Javier. And I actually just met Tony at an event, oh, man, three or four days ago, and I have actually heard of Tony uh, through some mutual friends um, over the last couple months. So it was really cool to get to run into Tony at uh, at this mastermind event and really learn a little bit more about you know what Tony's been up to as a real estate investor and uh, learn more about his program. Uh, so here he is. I got him on the show today and uh, we're going to learn a little bit more about Tony. So Tony, welcome to the show, man. How are you? What's up, man? Good to, good to see you again, and uh, I'm excited to be on here. Man, one of the things that I'm really impressed with Tony is, is that he has a business in Wichita, Kansas, correct me if I'm wrong, but lives in San Diego. Yep. And right. I think that that's the coolest thing because a lot of people, they get into real estate investing because they're tired of the 40-hour week. But what ends up happening, man, they go from 40 to 80 hours, you know, and they don't end up getting that freedom, um, you know, sometimes never. Right. So when I heard that about Tony, I'm like, man, this guy's got it dialed in. He's living in a different area than he's operating his business in. So he's obviously got a lot of systems and processes in place. So, Tony, if you don't mind, tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got started and uh, maybe how you progressed to where you're at today, man. Yeah. You know, what's funny is I, you know, I talk to investors all the time and anybody's in, in their young twenties. I'm like, man, I got started when they were like in diapers, man. It's crazy. <laughs> I don't feel that old, but I, you know, I'm getting up there. So I've been in, yeah, I've been flipping for 20 years now. Um, I found Carlton sheets, no down payment system, uh, on a late night infomercial. I think a lot of people know who that is. At least maybe those are a little bit older, uh, OG of education. And uh, taught me how to buy properties with no money down. So, um, you know, I bought that in April of 2001. And September of 2001, I was getting ready to close my first two properties and 9-11 hit. And um, luckily I was in Wichita, Kansas. So there wasn't a big effect on the market, but it was kind of an inter interesting time to get into real estate because there was a lot of, uh, a lot of uncertainty. But um, so from that program, the no down payment system, just like it says, it's like, how do you get in properties with no money down? And so I ended up, um, raising money for, um, my first two properties. Like I said, to close in September, December, 2000, 2001. And I like to say I'm in bird, but I'm sure it was happening before then, but I bird my first, uh, 10 properties. So Burr is buy, renovate, um, rent, refinance, repeat for those mm -hmm. who uh, are, are new to the term. Mm -hmm. And I did that for my first 10 properties. It was crazy because I, I bought 10 properties and I think we had like $250,000 in equity or something like that. So you did this in 2001? This was 2001. Wow, yeah. man. That's yeah. crazy. That's awesome. Very cool. Yeah. So uh, I actually just ended up selling um, probably half of those properties just literally like in the last few months. So. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I've been doing it pretty much since then. I was just talking to you today. We, you know, we still raise money. I actually lend money myself and, um, I've got many different businesses. So I live in San Diego. I got my business, um, you know, automated, uh, seven, let's see, six or seven years ago in Wichita, Kansas and, uh, became very hands-off and met my wife who's from Canada and we moved to San Diego and we operate our businesses from here. So we, you know, we, uh, we run many different programs that help real estate investors from, TV commercials that we run for uh, real estate investors around the country to funding properties for real estate investors and, you know, a lot of other things. So we're, um, you know, heavily, heavily in the space. I'm running TV in multiple markets myself around the country and just loving this business, man. So much opportunity to it. Man, that's amazing. So you've been in the game for 20 years. I've been in the game for about 17, but I was passive for the first 10, meaning I was just buying like one a year. I was paying full retail, you know, don't do what I did. 
Um, so when you when you first started, you were doing bird. Did you have you been doing that for twenty years, or did you, you know, at, at some point start wholesaling and doing fix and flips as well? Or you know, I'm just kind of curious about that. Yeah. So I'm I'm a uh, flip um, a flipper by nature, and yep. over the years I've just kept properties, you know, here and there. And now, like I mentioned before, we hit play here the last. Gosh, I want to say about nine months now. We've just been holding everything. Like, unless it's a higher price property, I may sell it. Um, but, you know, rents are going up, prices are going up, and even properties we bought six months ago, I'm getting reappraised for anywhere from twenty to seventy-five thousand dollars more than we thought the highest ARV was at that time in Wichita, Kansas. So it's not like San Diego. San Diego would be a different story. It'd be like probably two hundred thousand dollars more. Yeah. Um, but. Um, but yeah, we, from day one, that's what I did was just buy discounted properties. I've never, that I can remember, I don't think I've ever bought anything retail. You know, The I've only bought- property I have is the one I'm sitting in because of course the wife wanted it and you know, it's in a good area, but other than, you know, well, I shouldn't say that the first 10 years I was buying retail, but since I went full time, same. Yeah, man, that's amazing. So flipper by nature, been burring for 20 years, fixing, flipping, wholesale, I'm sure. Um, so let's talk about leads because, you know, a lot of the listeners here are new and or, you know, haven't been in the game as long as you and I have. And the main thing that I'd like to teach, you know, on this show and to just all my students is, you know, don't pay retail for properties, buy them at a discount. But in order to do that, you have to have the ability to get direct to the seller. So what kind of strategies are you using to get direct to the seller? Yeah. So, um, 10 years ago, I'll tell you a story. So 10 years ago, I was at, uh, I met a friend at a networking event. He invited, uh, he introduced me to another friend. So we have, I was playing poker at his house that night. So we go down to the basement. He's got these tables set up, you know, and, um, so we're sitting at the table and then down the stairs walks this guy and i'm like i know that guy i'm like oh man that guy's on tv you know i get this whole celebrity factor thing in my head he's just a contractor and i say just a contractor but you know what i'm saying like sure a normal guy but he had he was on tv and he sits you know next to me and i was like hey man you know how are your tv commercials doing for you just kind of you know quizzing him i'm pretty curious and i just start drilling him about his commercials and he's like dude i do two million dollars a year of constructing business just off my tv commercials like that's all the marketing we do and so, um, you know, I was like, well, how did you do it? You know, what does it cost? And he's like, you know what? Talk to my media guy, Drew. He's the one that got me on there. He'll answer all your questions. So next day, pick up the phone. I'm like, hey, Drew, man, heard you're the man. Uh, he's like, yeah, let me, you know, let me call the stations and see if I can get you some shows that I think would be good for your demographic. Calls me back, you know, I don't know, a few days later. He's like, yeah, I got some good rates, man. Here they are. Um you know, and he's like, you know, I need you to put a script together. You can come and shoot the commercial. We'll, you know, you know, work on it together. So within about a month, I had a commercial and I was on TV myself, right? Yeah, that and quick. So, it took, it took a, only took a month. No, it took a, I probably, it was probably less than that. I mean, you know, we, now we help real estate investors on, you know, around the country um, get on TV. And I, I guess we've refined the process, but yeah, we can get someone on TV in less than 30 days. So um, so yeah, it was very quick, very efficient. Um, my media, media guy was unbelievable. So over the last 10 years, I am one of the only, if not the only real estate, and actually I, I knew one real estate investor until about a couple of years ago that was on TV. Since then, I've heard, kind of heard some others outside of our program, but I joined a high level mastermind about seven years ago and me and one other guy out of 120 to 150 high level investors were the only two on TV. Right. I didn't know I was sitting on a gold mine for other people. Um, so I, about two years ago, um, someone approached me and they're like, man, you got a gold mine. Why don't you teach other people what you do? And I said, you know, I don't know if I want to do that or not. And then he kept nudging me and this guy's like, man, you got to do it. So I called my media guy, Drew, and I said, hey, if I show people my scripts, if I show them what stations have worked for me, because over 10 years, we've tried different stuff and tested different stuff. So we feel like we have like a really good formula together of what works. I said, if I show people what I'm doing, will you do the fulfillment and help them buy the media, call the stations? Because that's one of the biggest reasons that real estate investors don't get on TV is first of all, they think it's too expensive. Second of all, they start calling the stations and the stations are like, yeah, we'll sell you this 10 to $15,000 package of commercials. And this is for one station where most markets we can get on like 
four stations for 5,000 a month, right? And so, um, so he come, came on board and he said, yeah, let's go. And so we launched a couple of years ago and started getting great results. And we're just, our clients are crushing it around the country, um, getting insane results. So we're working, uh, we've sold 135 spots around the country. Um, uh, real estate investors running TV and most of them, when we launch them in the market, they're just crushing it right out of the gate. So that is the long answer to TV is my number one marketing method. As you can probably imagine, it's been mm -hmm. a lot of 10 years. Um, and then on top of that, we do, um, we do a little bit of Facebook. That's not a great, um, money getter, but it's, you know, getting, keeping in front of people. Um, we do Google PPC. Uh, we just spend a little bit of money, get a few deals a year off of that. Um, actually I think postcards are probably the next biggest thing that we do on top of TV, which actually works very well with TV because we put asking on TV on our postcards and a lot of people call us from our postcards and say, Hey, we got a stack of postcards and we call only you or called you first because you're on TV and we don't know these other guys. Um, so that's so been, it's instant credibility, instant credibility. Yeah. And it's converting. And our clients are saying the same thing. They're converting deals from postcards. They normally wouldn't have because, because of their commercials. Um, so yeah, so that's, uh, that's in, um, let's see what else we do a lot of other just random little things. Like we text, you know, realtors, you know, you can only text them so many times. So we're not big on that, but we probably get a deal or two a year off of that. Um, and then just a mix of all the other things. And now, now I've been in the business long enough. We get, you know, referrals, word of mouth, uh, realtor sending us deals cause we're on TV and I've been in the business long enough that people know who I am in my market and, and, um, you know, that kind of thing. So do you, so I got a couple questions. This is great. So I love the fact that you said you don't have to spend 10 or $15,000. You know, you can get in for a couple thousand bucks a month and maybe even have multiple stations for that type of an ad spend. Do you recommend the investor be in the commercial? 100%. Um, there's an exception to that. I'd say about 10% of our clients either think, they're too white, too dark, too young, too old, too big of an accent, um, or good looking enough. You know, there's all kinds of random reasons that people, you know, don't want to be on TV. But most of our clients are comfortable on TV. They're high level investors. Some of them are already doing video. So 100%. Um, and I set this up like I would want it set up. So, um, you know, full disclosure on the ad spend. So you get every, get, get the full schedules. And then your brand is in there. And then we want you in the commercial because you're the business owner. Um, it is beneficial that, you know, you do talk to the clients and you do go to the, to the, to the houses. But the big question I get is you're in San Diego or, you know, if I'm doing a virtual market or someone's not doing, uh, acquisitions, is it okay for them to be in the commercial, but not go out to the properties? And I say hundred percent last, you know, seven years, I think it's been seven years since I've been on a seller appointment. We bought hundreds of houses since then. But you're the one and on the commercial for your market then. Absolutely. And Got very it. rarely does anybody ask for me. And if they do, I fight one person a year that's like adamant and will not talk to anybody else. And I'm like, sorry, I just, you know, I can't, I can't just drop what I'm doing and try and talk to, you know, everybody that, that, that wants to talk to me. Uh, but usually my team's pretty good about saying, you know what, he, he's hired us to help him. We're going to give you better service because he's really busy. So, you know, let us see what we can do for you. And if he needs to come in and, and talk to you, then, then he will. And usually they can overcome you know what's funny and i love that you say that because i would i would yeah i agree and i think that that's a, a great answer so i have a virtual assistant he's a rock star he's been with me for seven years his name's dennis mm -hmm. and when i show up because i do acquisitions still just because i live in my market and i actually kind of enjoy it oddly enough i know a lot of people they want to outsource that first to me i want to outsource everything and then just do that once or twice a day if i'm in town of course um but the point that I was trying to make is that, you know, Dennis is typically the one that's answering the inbound calls and, you know, even doing some of the outbound marketing. And when I show up, I'm the owner of the company, but they're like, well, where's Dennis at? <laughs> you know, and I'm like, well, you said, actually, you said he's a VA. Yeah, he's a virtual assistant. He's got he's got really good English, you know, but nice. they'll be like, well, where's Dennis at? Dennis is great. We talked to him for 30 minutes the other day and we figured he would be the one coming out. And I'm like, well, you know. Dennis is on my team and, uh, you know, he's a valued member of the team, but I'm the owner and I'm the one that's going to write the check to buy the property. Is it okay if you, if you work with me, you know, and there, it's never a problem, but it's funny because 
It hasn't happened like once or twice. I'm talking like 50 times. Where's Dennis? You know, it's well, that like, means oh. he's doing that means he's doing a good job, right? That means he's doing a good job. People and that's why he's Dennis. still on my team. That's and right. it's awesome you say that because people are like, How do you have a lead manager that's a virtual assistant? Because I have one too. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm like, she's got a little bit of an accent, but the thing is, like, if you if they're like positive, they're upbeat, they're giving good service, they're good on the phone, like people aren't really gonna care if they have it. Now, if it's like really thick accent and obviously uh, but yeah I, I think virtual assistants for lead managers are great agreed 100 percent. okay so i got some questions i want to fire off at you here real quick do the networks do they have do they require you to sign a contract and i would imagine excuse me i'd imagine that it may vary of course but from 130 students plus students what are you typically seeing is it pretty standard all across the country or or no well, here's the thing. We do the implementation. So um, we call them clients because we're actually doing the work for them, uh, most of the work. And so if someone goes to the stations themselves, again, they're going to try and pitch the most expensive stuff. They're not going to know your business. They're going to try and write scripts for you. They have no idea, you know, who you're targeting. It's just, it's, it's uh, you know, it, it's really hard dealing directly with the, the, the stations. And so when we come in as a representative, it's kind of like having a buyer's agent for you. And we're like, okay, here's the deal. We're doing this all over the country. We have great success. We have a system. Um, and if, if someone called directly to the station, they would try and sell them the really expensive package and they would try and get at least a six month, if not a 12 month commitment. So when we come in, we're like, we're not doing that. So not only are we not paying your rates, we're going to negotiate those rates. But we also want the ability to cancel the commercials within a 30-day time frame. And sometimes we can even get it down to two weeks. Nice. We'll actually book it out as far as we can because we get really good rates. Sure. And so those rates are locked in for a long time, but in our contract says that we can um, we can cancel within a 30-day notice or sometimes even we can even get it down to two weeks. Um, so there's not a long-term commitment. It's very inexpensive compared to what you think it's going to be. And we get, we get our clients anywhere from usually on the low end, it's like four to 500 commercials a month. And I think the most we've gotten a client is like 1200 commercials a month. That means they're on air anywhere from like 10 to 15 times a day up to 40 times a day. Wow. So we're getting seen a lot and that's where our fun. clients are doing so well. Holy cow, man. That's awesome. That's so yeah. awesome. So the... What would you recommend in terms of, um, in terms of, you know, is it better to be on more stations or is it better to just really saturate, you know, one or two stations? Does it, does it matter? Yeah, there's, it's a combination of the two. So we never recommend just one station. So typically we do two, um, and we try and saturate those two stations first. And then if someone has the budget for it, we get them a third station. So a $5,000 budget in a small market can get anywhere from two to four stations. Um, you get into the bigger markets if you want to be on all four or five stations. We have about five stations that typically have the shows that we'd recommend. Um, you know, that could be quite a bit more expensive where it's like 15 to 20 grand a month. Uh, sure. But most markets, I would say probably 50% of the markets throughout the country have $5,000 budget. So get them on anywhere from two to four stations, um, small markets, 5,000 bucks gets you like a thousand commercials a month. It's crazy. Um, yeah. That's that, a lot of commercials, man. It, it's a lot. And, and our clients are seeing that are spending five grand a month. I mean, you do the math on it. You do one deal, you're getting probably a four to five times return on your investment. And we have some clients that are doing, you know, three, four, five, even some that have done 10 deals in a month. You know, for sure. Yeah. And spending five grand a month, right? So yeah, five grand a month. Let's say that they're only doing ten thousand on a deal, right? So that's fifty thousand. That's a forty-five k net on uh, on that spend. That is that's amazing. Holy cow! And ho and hopefully they're doing more than ten grand on that deal. You know, so yeah, I've got one client that's cons that was at one point was consistently doing a hundred to two hundred grand a month. His best month off a of five thousand dollar ad spend was two hundred grand. And then he sent me his numbers for the first three months of uh, this year, and he's doing a, averaging eighty grand a month on a oh, five thousand dollar ad spend. Holy cow! Now is he fix and flip? Is he wholesale? What's he doing? Well, that's the thing is he's doing he's doing wholesale fix and flip and buy and hold. So that's not including the buy and hold properties that he's not getting income on. So, I love it. So he's gaining yeah. equity there all all across the board, and then he, he's just giving you the the numbers on what's actually 
putting in his bank account from the wholesales or from the fix and flips. That's amazing. Exactly. Yeah. Holy cow. So yeah. Tony, if somebody's, you know, wanting to learn more about, you know, working with you and your team and getting on the radio, where do they go? Do they connect with you on social media? Do you have a website? What's the program called? Yeah. So it's TV. People get radio and TV mixed up all the time. So TV, um, go to remtv.com. So that stands for real estate masters that's the name of the program real estate masters tv remtv.com there you go there you go it's on your shirt there um yeah just go uh, we do sell a lot of markets um pretty frequently so if you're interested i would definitely go asap um we've sold out a little more than a third we're getting close to half the u.s um just in the last about year and a half to two years i think our our official official launch was about a year and a half ago we did a soft launch a couple of years ago um, so the cool thing is, is that this is plug and play in any market. So we've got several clients that either do their market or their main market, and then they start plugging into other markets. Or if your market's taken, we can still look at another market that's close to you or where you have maybe some JV partners on the ground. And we also have a JV partnership. So for those that, um, want me as a partner, I'm actually willing, um, for the right partners to do TV with them in different markets. Uh, and we will actually do, um, uh, we'll actually answer the calls, uh, take the leads. Our JV partners are typically the one that do the deals and we actually bring the funding. So we're doing some really cool wholesale deals right now. I've got a deal right now in, um, in Texas with a JV partner. We closed on it for 135. We funded that hundred uh, percent. and we just sold it for 225 without doing any work to it, except for cleaning it up. Clean it up and clean it out. I love yeah, it. That's it. And we've got several other deals we're doing that are like light rehabs that are going to do anywhere from 30,000 to, I think we have another deal that may do close to a hundred grand. Um, that's a little bit of a bigger rehab, but we've got some great deals cranking and TV, um, you know, TV brings those big deals because, you know, when, when you're doing TV, the great thing is, is you're the only one typically they call, you know, when you do direct mail, everyone's hitting the same list when you're doing cold calling and texting, same list TV, it's like very rarely are people doing TV in a market. And so um, when a TV commercial comes on and someone calls, they're very motivated. And um, typically you're the only one going out so you can get a better deal. So we have several clients that are doing $100,000 wholesale and wholesale deals from their TV commercials. Man, that is phenomenal. All right. Well, tell me something else about TV that I don't, I probably don't know, or that this audience doesn't know. I know you got to have something up your sleeve. There's a lot of stuff that people don't know, and that's why we keep it up our sleeve. <laughs> but um, I'll tell you one thing. Okay. People are going to look at you way differently. That's right. So I live in San Diego. When I go to Wichita, I can tell there that you know people looking at me like, you know, like they kind of know me. It's him. It's that guy. Yeah. yeah. And then every once in a while, someone's like Tony Javier, the real estate guy, and it's like. Yeah, I paid to be on TV. You, you know, you can act like I get paid to be on TV, but you know, uh, whatever. But no, it, it's it, it's instant credibility, and people just like whether it's contractors. I actually had a private lender um, come into our office from a TV commercial. This is when I was still living in Wichita, and he's like, "Hey, I want to invest in real estate, but I don't really want to buy houses." You know. What mm -hmm. do you and so um, we get into a conversation and we're like, hey, we do private, uh, we have private lenders that lend on deals all the time. Um, so within about a 12 month period, him and his parents um, had over a million dollars invested with us. And anytime I get a referral from a, uh, someone local in Wichita where we get on the phone, even though I live in San Diego and they're like, oh yeah, I've seen you on TV. It's a slam dunk deal. Like they just know like, you know, um, they just know that because we're on TV, um, that we're more credible than, than just Joe Schmo on the street. So, man, so many advantages, the instant credibility there and that in itself is like five things, right? Like they're only going to want to work with you. They're not going to want to call other people. You know, you're instantly famous. And if you do, if you are in a market where you're doing the commercials as well as the acquisitions, they're going to be like starstruck when you come through the front door and like, oh my God, it's the guy that's on TV. This is great. Um, and what I really like about it too is, and you mentioned this, is that there's not a lot of people doing it. Whereas 
I've gone on property appointments where there's been a stack of postcards two inches thick on the table, yeah. you know, and we do some cold calling and some cold texting and it's starting to get it. I shouldn't say starting. It's been pretty aggressive and competitive, uh, but it's getting to the point now where, you know, you text somebody and say, hey, you know, you are the owner of this property. You know, it's let's say it's a vacant property that's got high equity. And, and they say, yeah, you're the 15th guy this week that sent me a text message about it. You know, mm -hmm. so competition in a lot of these other you know forms of marketing is gotten pretty fierce. But there's really not that many people, you know, doing television. So that's why I'm very, very intrigued, you know, by this source of marketing. Another thing is, is the the marketing that is inbound in my opinion and i would imagine you'll agree uh, but is typically a higher quality lead than the outbound i mean we might have to do 50 outbound leads to get a deal whereas the inbound it may be only five or ten or fifteen i mean it's a substantially lot a whole lot less with the inbounds versus the outbounds so not only is it going to give you a ton of advantages, it's cost effective or can be, uh, but it's also going to allow you to work less and make more. I mean, who doesn't want to do more with less? Like that's my number one goal in life is, you know, how do I do more with less? I don't, more isn't more, less is more, right? So if you can do less with more, you're going to be, you're going to be much better off. Man, Tony, this has been great. Tell everybody once again, where they can learn more about you and your program. Yeah, go to remtv.com and just a short little application, fill out a, uh, fill out a form and then uh, schedule a call with my team and uh, we'll, we'll let you know what markets we have available and see how we can help you. You heard it from the man himself, Tony Javier. I didn't script his name that time. <laughs> you got Tony, it. Aaron. Tony Javier, he is yeah. the man. And Tony, what's your favorite social platform? Um, that I'm on, you mean? Yep. Uh, well, mostly Facebook. I, I actually had my, it was a crazy story. So I had, I had someone mimic my Instagram No way. And, and I was growing it and I had so many people message me like, Hey, you know, someone's mimicking you and they're like trying to get me to buy crypto. They're messing, you know, it looked like everything was duplicated exactly like my account. So I go on Instagram and turn them in and they shut me down before they shut the other guy down. Oh, that, and, that and it makes went, it, it went, it really went hard. For, it went by for a week and they finally shut the other guy down and they won't give me back my account. It's so frustrating. So oh, anyway, man. you can still connect with me there. Um, Tony Javier REI is my new Instagram. Uh, so I'm, I'm having to grow that back again. So anyway, things happen for a reason and you know, maybe there was a reason that needed to happen, but really frustrating, but you can find me on Facebook or, uh, or Instagram and um, yeah, connect with me there. I love it. Tony, thanks so much for coming on the show today. Guys, don't forget, you make your money when you buy, you get paid when you sell. So do not buy properties at retail. Learn the direct to seller marketing game because once you do, you will have the ability and the skill set to find deals. And once you find a deal, all of the doors, all the exit options open to you. You can wholesale those deals. You can fix and flip those deals. You can add them to the portfolio and use the Burr method like Tony and I love to do. So at the end of the day, just understand that you make your money when you buy and you get paid when you sell. Tony, any parting words for the audience? No, you, you did touch on a good point. You know, um, less is more. Like the more you can work, the less you can work in your business, like today, I went and I played, and honestly, I, I have to disclose to you, I had to push our, our, our call back an hour. I had to go play pickleball. Hey, I that's okay. To. Yeah, that's to. fun. So like, I had some meetings clear up and I'm like, I need two or three hours just to go hit a ball. And yeah, I do that yeah. probably two or three times a week. I go flying. And it's all because I was able to set my business up where it doesn't really need me anymore. I have five different businesses I'm running. I have really good people in place. So I just encourage you guys to find good people, step up your hiring game, find people like David that can teach you how to do what you want to do and where you want to be. And the sky is the absolute limit. I didn't think, you know, 10 years ago when I landed in San Diego and, and fell in love with it, I thought it was going to be 10 to 20 years before I'd moved to San Diego, ended up happening within like five years. And then knowing that I'm in San Diego doing the things I'm doing, getting ready to buy a plane. I'm flying in beautiful San Diego. I just, I share that because 
so many things are possible in this business if you uh, just believe that it can happen and um, just get connected with some great people. I love it, man. That's great advice. I love, I love it. it. Awesome. Yep, yep. All right, guys, that's that's a wrap. Signing off. Thanks for listening. Don't forget, you make your money when you buy. You get paid when you sell. Until next time, signing off. Thanks for listening to the Discount Property Investor Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please like, share, and subscribe to help us reach a wider audience. To jumpstart your real estate investing career, visit freewholesalecourse.com, the most complete free course on wholesaling real estate ever. We would also appreciate it if you left us a review on iTunes or Stitcher. Thank you in advance for your support. And remember, you make your money when you buy, you get paid when you sell. Now let's go build some wealth.